To visit Tokyo is to glimpse the future. Not our future, perhaps, but maybe the future of some alternate timeline. It's a city that's inspired countless sci-fi epics, from Blade Runner to Ghost in the Shell, from New Romancer to Snow Crash. Something about these neon-lit streets have evoked both high-tech heaven and a low-life hell. The perfect backdrop, perhaps, to consider the future of an even more radical vision of the future. The metaverse. What is the metaverse? I like to think of the metaverse as really a more immersive vision of the internet that we have today, but one that blurs the boundaries between the real and virtual worlds. The metaverse, however, is not a place. It's a set of protocols. A protocol is a simple set of rules that governs how data moves between systems. On the internet, it allows us to send emails or view web pages. In the cryptocurrency world, it allows us to buy and sell digital assets. When it comes to the metaverse, it may become a digital operating system that allows the creation of interoperable digital worlds that both extend and mirror the world as we know it today. The interesting question though is not what is the metaverse, but how will it change life as we know it? As I said before, Tokyo is a fascinating place to consider what the future of cyberspace might be like. There's something about life here that evokes this concept of what anthropologists call techno-animism, an idea that traces its roots right back to the early and ancient Shinto religion, which believed that everything in life, ordinary objects like stones and rocks, streams or swords, are infused with souls and spirits. I like to think that this is an interesting parallel and metaphor for what life might be like for you and I in a mature metaverse when you put on a pair of magic glasses and suddenly everything around you seems different. Objects are infused with data. You see the connections between you and others and everyday things in ways that you simply did not notice before. It's like the re-enchantment of the material world. And I believe that this process of re-enchantment is gonna be particularly accelerated in three domains. And they are around interactions, incentives and identity. So first of all, interactions. Have you noticed with the emergence of a new medium, there's always a new set of behaviors that somehow co-evolves with it? So with smartphones, I believe that decades from now, future generations are gonna literally laugh at the way that we used to walk around streets, our heads buried at these tiny little screens in our hands, to the extent that they've even had to install special signal indicator lights in street corners so that people don't cross streets and kill themselves while looking at their phones. So as the metaverse starts to emerge, what are the new behaviors that are gonna co-evolve with it? Will you be sitting with someone, they suddenly start staring off into space, looking at something that only they can see that's being displayed on their digital contact lens? And this is already starting with something as simple as a kind of a concept of a meeting. I mean, look at how post the pandemic, the way people change their behavior when they're on a Zoom call. What happens when this is now not just a two-dimensional world, but a three-dimensional virtual world, or a hybrid environment where people are in augmented reality and the other participants are actually holograms? How will subtle things like the use of filters change the way that people respond to you? Can we actually use facial expressions that are digitally altered to change people's impressions? This becomes an interesting question, not just for the way we interact, but for brands and organizations. Because now you're not just designing for a flat screen, you're actually designing a multi-dimensional interactional model, truly for an experience. And in the experiences, what are the behaviors, interactions that are most valuable to you? If you're an insurance company, how do you get people to exercise more? If you're a fintech platform, how do you get people to invest more wisely? Or if you're a charity, how do you get people to truly empathize and connect with the issue you're trying to build? In an experiential setting in the metaverse, it's very different to thinking about a mobile phone or a traditional screen. The second domain is incentives. What will it take to get people to participate more fully in the metaverse? Well, quite simply, I think it's gonna be about money. In the era of the social web, people created content to get attention. And if you're one of the lucky few, that attention was able to be translated into both money and fame. 
But one of the things that differentiates the metaverse from the web of today is the possibility of decentralized ownership of digital assets. And I think in the future metaverse, whether it's some kind of version of the blockchain or NFTs or non-fungible tokens, being able to own things and transfer them will be a key part of what keeps people wanting to spend time in this construct of reality. But be warned, it won't be easy getting the big tech giants to grant that level of ownership. Even now, companies like Apple are locked in a war with Epic Games, the makers of Fortnite, about Apple's vision of a walled garden ecosystem. The battle for the economics of cyberspace is only just beginning. The final domain is identity. The metaverse will not only allow us to create digital versions of ourselves in this new world, it'll allow for the creation of many versions of ourselves as well. As Walt Whitman would put it, we contain multitudes. These pseudo-anonymous identities will allow us to create a version that we might interact with fellow co-workers, another version that we shop and trade with various people, and another version that we hang out with our friends and participate in various hobbies. These pseudo-anonymous versions of ourselves will give us some version of privacy and allow us to present different iterations to different audiences. But there's also a risk that these very same metaverse technologies will start to intrude on our privacy as well, to essentially to digitally dox us if we're not careful. Because just as we look at the metaverse, the metaverse will be looking back at us. These devices will contain cameras that not only look outwards, but also look at us as well, that can track our gaze, where we're looking, our irises opening and shutting, how we breathe, how we emotionally respond to different things we can see, It'll allow us to revolutionize advertising as we know it, but it'll also make it increasingly difficult to evade those same marketers who can now track us literally wherever we happen to be. What I love about Tokyo are its contradictions. This is a city of gleaming skyscrapers right next to traditional temples, high-tech robots and taxis with white lace seat covers. Michelin star sushi restaurants and cheap love hotels. But in the end, these complexities I think are a feature, not a bug. In the same way, if the metaverse is gonna work, we're gonna to have to embrace its sharp edges and work towards open platforms, decentralized governments and distributed ownership, even at times if this means embracing chaos, uncertainty and criminality. People want to spend time in places that amplify humanity rather than seek to constrain it. We need to be able to celebrate billions of people's subjective realities rather than try to impose a single objective reality on them, digital or otherwise. What makes cities work is the recognition they are complex adaptive systems and the metaverse is no different. So get ready. From here, things are gonna get weird. Suit up, smarten up, toughen up. A new reality awaits. The metaverse is not for snowflakes. It's a new world, a world for cyberpunks.